Hello, this is a short video abstract of our work currently published in Brain Communications as an open access article. My name is Rohit Sinha and I work in the Cambridge Brain Tumor Imaging Laboratory and over the next few minutes I'll explain the context and findings of our research. Glioblastoma, the most aggressive brain cancer, can affect adults with no previous medical problems and otherwise normal functioning. Rapid deterioration with headaches or seizures can lead to the diagnosis by a brain scan and within a week or so after that open brain surgery can follow. This may even be with the person awake. Within a few weeks of having that first scan people leave hospital to recover from surgery before they can have radiotherapy. However at this point people with glioblastoma often find themselves at home unable to return to work unable to drive and aware of the prognosis that on average they will die in less than two years. As well as this, social isolation and withdrawal from previous activities is common in this period as highlighted here by this slide from the Brain Tumor Charity. This is assumed to be in part due to a variety of problems with cognition and thinking that are also faced by people with glioblastoma. Studies in other contexts, such as head injury and neurodegenerative disorders, have shown that deficits in emotion recognition function are part of similar social withdrawal and poor quality of life. They've also revealed that changes in particular white matter connections in the brain underlie these emotion recognition deficits. Our aim in this study is to identify the white matter tracts associated with emotion recognition deficits in participants with glioblastoma from before to after resection surgery, at a time when these structures and functions are at additional risk. To do this, we used a technique called tract-based spatial statistics, as with the previous studies. However, using a co-registration method described in our article, we were able to perform the analysis despite the considerable distortion of the scan images due to the glioblastoma tumours themselves and the surgical cavities after treatment. Using tablet computer-based cognitive testing, we found that people with glioblastoma had significantly worse emotion recognition function after surgery, as compared to before surgery. We also used some cognitive control tests to assess for vision and perception more broadly. Here in this figure, we can see that when doing a line bisection task, as on the top row, a neutral face recognition and object recognition task on rows two and three, where these same participants were not worse off after surgery, this was reflected in the brain scan analysis with no track changes highlighted. However, their worsening of emotion recognition function was associated with changes corresponding to the inferior frontoreceptor fasciculus, the inferior longitudinal fasciculus, unsynapse fasciculus, and anterior thalamic radiation all in the right hemisphere. These findings mirror the findings of previous studies in participants with other brain diseases, suggesting common anatomical mechanisms across these different conditions, and with an implication of right cerebral hemisphere dysfunction for emotion recognition deficits. This work has been used to set up further research into social cognition and rehabilitation for people with glioblastoma. Here is Dr. Helen Bulbeck, head of the Brains Trust charity, to explain the scope of the current research for people with glioblastoma in the future. Thanks Rohit. So I'm Helen Bulbeck, Director of Policy and Services at Brains Trust, the Brain Cancer People. We're a UK-wide charity that supports people on their journey when living with a brain tumour. Um, the challenges that somebody who's been diagnosed with a glioblastoma faces are just huge and existential. It strikes at the very essence of who you are. So you have to cope with the disease trajectory, high symptom burden, progressive neurocognitive and neurological decline, the pressure of teleological time too, the, time that's the, the sense that time is running out, lack of support and a sense of isolation and loss of social connectivity. You have to live with uncertainty, deal with heightened emotions and always there is a focus on treatment. And so the scope of this research is so important to our community. Not only will it help people to have their best possible day, no matter where they are on their trajectory, but it will too connect brain cancer to other brain diseases. So we can build on a network of expertise where we can learn and collaborate. 
and make the world a better place for people living with a brain tumour. We truly believe that we're none of us as smart as all of us, and that's why this is so important.